Kim Gorski here, another edition of Balance Over Perfect. So this one, let's take a breather, take a step back, because this one gut checks us. This one goes to our heart. This one goes to our mind and things are swirling around like crazy and it always gets the best of us. Why aren't you enough? Why aren't you worthy of achieving things that other people are achieving? Why aren't you enough to have the dream life that you have or want? Why aren't you enough to achieve the weight loss that you deserve? Why aren't you enough? And this is a question that we always ask ourselves. This is a question that we may always ask ourselves. But what I can guarantee by the time you finish this podcast, and I don't make a ton of guarantees here, but by the time you finish this podcast, you will feel like you have a better foundation. You will feel a better understanding because this kind of talk, this kind of understanding, this kind of mindset work is needed because this little saying really is big in our minds. I am not enough. So when you feel a word like that, so maybe yours is not enough. Maybe yours is I'm not worthy. Maybe yours I am not loved. Maybe yours is I am not good. Whatever it is, put your word in there when I say enough. I know for myself, enough brings me to tears. But enough now brings me to be able to tear that down, to be able to understand it, and to be able to deal with it, opposed to ignore it. So I'm going to take you through a series of things of why this, I'm a not enough, I am, insert yours, lack thereof, is coming up for you. And again, this all may sound elementary. This all may sound, I heard that before, Kim. <laughs> but what I love to say is it's simple but yet complex. These sayings are simple but yet they're complex in our mind. These ways of thinking and doing are simple but complex because we don't do them. So that's why I love to bring you this podcast, love to bring you this dose, and love to be able to bring you some peace to be able to take some more action. Because these little sayings, yet big in our mind, is the reason why we aren't where we want to be, is the reason why we feel we are failing, is the reason why you don't wake up and go put your head down always fulfilled. And we do not live in this butterfly Snapchat filter world, that's for sure. But when we start to have the tools and the resources like this, we don't feel as alone. We don't feel it's as hard. So I'm before we get into it, before we get digging deep, please, I beg of you, pass this along to three of your girlfriends. Please. Reason being, I know. I know three of your girlfriends need this because I, after I'm done this and this is uploaded, I am going to send it to three of my girlfriends because this kind of talk is needed. This kind of love is needed. And this kind of corner of our world, we just need to just feel heard. There's two things that we need as human beings to feel understood and to be heard. How annoying is it when people just don't get you? How frustrating is when you don't feel like your voice matters or it's heard? So this is where you can have that corner of the world. So why aren't we enough? So let's go back to our past. So um, I love to talk about the past um, because it's vital. Um, and, and I think a really interesting thing that I, I always like to point out here is your past doesn't have to be bad, meaning you didn't have to have an estranged relationship with your parents. You didn't have to have something traumatic happen to you to have this kind of talk come up. Because I, I find that very interesting because when I share about my past, people are like, well, I didn't have it that bad, or I had it, or I had it worse, or I had it just less than of. 
it doesn't have to be a, a comparison game of what your past was. Your past literally could have said, someone could have said in terms or made you feel in one instance. And you have downloaded that into your brain to always think you're not enough. Because at one instance or several, whatever your case is, has given you all of these downloads to be able to take it into your adult life. So think about that. And I want you guys to really understand where this could stem from. And you're like, probably like, I'm racking my brains on this one. That's okay. But the awareness piece right here of just knowing that it could have stemmed from your past. Because when we have these lessons come up over and over and over again, we think it's what is happening currently. Or we think it's the people around us. So if you have something that's constantly coming up for you, so maybe it's not I'm enough, or you know, you're not getting paid enough, you, know, you aren't getting the respect enough, whatever that is, that is stemming from the past. But let's take the present day right now. So where is this coming up in the present day? So when I was saying about those lessons coming back up, they don't feel like lessons. They feel very annoying. They feel very frustrating. They feel like, when is this going to give? So it's only going to give until you are aware. So you may in present day have a spouse, have a loved one, have a coworker, have a boss that is constantly beating you down with this enough, constantly. So you either let it go and deal with it, quotes around that, deal with it, or you stand up to it. You say, thank you, universe. Thank you, God. I needed this lesson again. I needed to have this hard talk with myself first and this hard talk with the person second. Because it will not, and I repeat, it will not go away. How do I know? I've had many lessons come back up for me. Many. And it's interesting because when I think about that, this is where you start to hear that saying, trust your gut. I had my gut actually talk to me when I just said that to you. I've had many lessons come back up for me. Up for me because I still needed to learn them. I still needed to go back to what I stand on. I want to feel heard and understood. And that this is not this is a righteous thing that you deserve everything that comes your way um, and you don't have to earn it. No, 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 no. But when you don't feel heard and understood, ask yourself why. Because most of the time, not every time, but most of the time, it has to do with you. It doesn't have to do with the person on the other end. So when you go into the future and when you think about the future, is it even bright? Is it even capable? Because you have those two variables, those two layers, the past and the present. A lot of us live in the past. And what I mean by that is that we live in the past that hold us back, that holds us back. So we're physically only in the present, physically only in the present, but yet we're keeping ourselves in the past or we are keeping ourselves so far in the future that we are dreamers, but we're also doubtful it could happen because of the past. So it's like, you know, when you, you feel that there's no light at the end of the tunnel, that's you thinking in the future with your past always in mind. That is when we have to really understand that our past served us for a reason, but what is it not serving for us right now? Because if we don't figure out right now, the future will not matter. The future is gonna be like a groundhog day. The future is you showing up here next year still 
feeling the past. But we need to be aware of that. You know, we hear this a lot, awareness is key. But how are we actually taking that key, putting it into the door, opening it up, and seeing what we need to freaking figure out? For real. How often are we doing that? We hear it all the time. We are the owner of our our lives. We have the key to our destiny. But do we actually take that key? shaking our hands because we're nervous with that conversation, putting it into that keyhole, turning it with our hands still shaking, but we know once we open that, our voice is heard and we are understood. So now we have those hard conversations with ourselves. We have those hard conversations with the people in our life. We make those moves, but we may not get what we want to hear on the other end. But go back to this. Feel comfort in this. The conversation conversation was just for you. It wasn't for them. As much as you hurt, as much as you're frustrated, as much as it stinks, it wasn't for them. It was for you. So you writing that email to a loved one that you're afraid to get on a phone call right now, or they won't get on a phone call with you. Or you sending that letter, letter, you sending a text message, whatever it is, you getting on a call, you meeting for coffee, do it for you. Because then the gates open up. Then the I'm not enoughs become few and far between. Oh, sister, I will give you this right now. It will still come up but you will know how to handle it. You will know how to face it now. That's the beauty behind it. So now that we've covered really like, how can we look at the past, the present and the future? I wanna get to you right now. This goes with your past, this goes with your present, this goes with your future, but really all that really truly matters is what you do today. Not what you did yesterday, not what you do tomorrow. And why I say truly is because that's all we have is right now. You listening to this podcast, you going to the grocery store, you making that last call before the end of the night, you being able to be here right now. That's all that matters. So I want you to get silent for a second. I'm still here, but get silent. You don't need to close your eyes. You don't need to meditate. Just get silent in your own thoughts. A lot of things that's hard with meditation is that we force out the thoughts. One of the best practices I've learned is don't let them go. Honor those thoughts. So sit here for a few more seconds, be silent with those thoughts. When we're silent, we hear ourselves. When we're silent, we feel understood. We are so accustomed to do a workout to suppress our silence. We are so quick to get into work to to suppress that silence. We are so accustomed to go, go, go to suppress that silence. I ask of you today, and I ask of myself of this, let go of the chaos. Let go of the go, go, go and the expectations that everybody tells you to go to. Be silent more often. This is how we get present. This is how we find peace. This is where we get our grace. And this is what balance is. The goes, the silence. The goes, 
the silence, the hard, the great, the really bad, the good, the amazing. That's balance. But we go in the go, 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 and the low, low, low. The go, 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 the low, low, low. And But we don't figure out the peace in that. So if you're anything like me, that silence is earth shattering. It's louder than the go, go, go. It is gut wrenching than even more than the job loss. It is heart wrenching even more than the breakup. The silence is where it lies, guys. When you hear what's going on, when you hear you, because what you're going to hear is the truth. What you're going to hear is not on here. As much as you, I love when you guys send me a message. I love, love, love this. Please never stop doing this. I love when you guys send a message and it's like, you were in my head. As much as I love that, your silence is even more. But you got to be okay with that. You got to be okay with what comes up. That's why we don't do it. So I didn't go to therapy for many years. I went to therapy at 24. I'm 31 now to date right here. Whenever you listen to this, I could be 45. Who knows? But I was 24 and I knew for many years, like at least five years, that I needed to go see a therapist. But it came up for me as, um, I say, um, a psychic. So whenever I would see it, like shows like a psychic or I would drive by a psychic, I'm like, oh my God, I could never go to a psychic. Never do this. You know, and if this is against your religion, just burp, push it out. But when I would think of the psychic, aka even a therapist, I was like, they're going to know what's going on in my silence. I don't want to know about that. I don't even want to dig into that. That's scary to me. So you can ignore it. But just like I said earlier, the lessons that we still need to learn no, it will. Not won't. Not maybe. It will come up. It's like a bad movie and you like, <laughs> you have someone chasing after you and it's never stopping or you have a dream like that. It's the same thing, guys. So as much as I want to give you some sunflowers and, 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 um, and sunshine right now, this feels like darkness. This feels hard. But there is some sunshine and butterflies on the other end. So I want to leave you with this, because this is a lesson I just learned. I heard it before, just like I said, simple but complex. So it, this is on the umbrella of I'm not enough, or I am not. Insert yours. Have you ever found yourself under, wondering why you're jealous of others. So you're like, Kim, I'm not jealous. I'm happy for other people. Hey, me too. Or you're like, yeah, I don't get why she got all that. I don't get why she has all this confidence. I don't get why she got this and that. Yes, I get it. But what does it really mean? So when we think about or we talk badly or we even just kind of compare, what it's doing is it's actually taking us away from our feelings. What we're truly feeling, what we're truly envying, what we're truly kind of wanting, but not feeling we're capable, AKA not enough. But what's really beautiful about jealousy is it actually can actually bring you closer to that lesson we need to learn. So I just taught you about that earlier. So even though these negative thoughts or these envious thoughts or these, uh, you know, not so great feeling thoughts come up for you, can that be a lesson that you still need to learn? Can that be the silence that you can take from it? Because when you look at that next social media post or you look at that next celebration for someone else but you, what can you learn from that? And that's where I want you to sit in that silence. This isn't easy. It's always worth it. You've heard that before. 
but make sure you show up for you. That's the end all. That's the point of this. It's so hard to do this alone. I've done it many times alone. I'm 31 years young, but I've done many things in my life alone, not heard, not understood. It's no fun. So be vulnerable with yourself. Be vulnerable with a friend. Be vulnerable with me. Be vulnerable in our community. Because that will lead you to a life that you're feeling more than enough. Not just enough, more than enough. Guys, as always, give yourself grace for yesterday, peace for today, and a plan for tomorrow.